files, siphons them up off your computer, sends them up to Microsoft servers, you know, some other guy's computer, aka the cloud, and then deletes them from your computer. On this channel, I've discussed automatic updates, destroying the software on your computer, or potentially even being used to do all kinds of bad things by default. Some of which, like FileZilla, FileZilla server comes with a poison pill built in, where if it's too old of a copy, it refuses to work anymore. Even though a lot of that's theoretical, there's actually a very real threat that you may not have considered. And it comes from accidents, or sometimes not accidents. Windows Update on more than one occasion has been known to cause problems that have nuked a user's user profile. This manifests as them attempting to log in, but ending up in a temporary profile. Of course, they don't know it's a temporary profile. What they see is an empty account with no data in it. Their account is still there, but their data is inaccessible. Because they're logged into a temporary profile, and because profiles are locked by default so that the security only allows the user that has that account into that profile, you can't actually go in there and dig up your data, now can you? You have to know how to get to an administrative command prompt or otherwise get administrative access to those files to get them back. Or you have to know know how to find the profile list in the registry and flip the profile back so that it's not unable to be logged into. Unfortunately, anything you do in the temporary profile is deleted after you've done it. If you do any kind of work, it will continue to get lost forever. This has happened more than once with Windows Update, and it's a serious annoyance. Imagine you don't have your data anymore. It's a bit of a pain, but you can at least go back in there and get it, or pay me hundreds of dollars to get it for you. Isn't that wonderful? Something that Microsoft sent you that's supposed to increase your security and reliability and fix bugs and make things behave better makes it so that you have to pay someone a couple hundred dollars to go in there and fix all the stupid in your computer that Microsoft put there to help you. It's not just Microsoft, this kind of thing can happen to anyone, but the way that the user profile system is set up in Windows NT systems, which, yes, even Windows 11 is still technically an NT kernel, means that your profile can be lost in this way, and you have to be an expert to get your stuff back. How about a different scenario? Windows is notorious for shoving OneDrive on there any time that it can. If you update, OneDrive may get reinstalled on your computer without permission. If you install Microsoft 365, which should still be called Office 365 because it's Microsoft Office, God almighty, I cannot, I have to just go on this tangent real quick. I can't believe that Microsoft made it so that the users back in the day who referred to Office as just Microsoft are now correct. And now we have a situation like Google Chrome where they can't differentiate between Google the company, Google the search engine, and Google Chrome the web browser. It's all just a Google. Well, now it's just a Microsoft. But if you install Office 365, I'm oh, I'm sorry, Microsoft 365, they'll shovel OneDrive, Teams, and Skype for Business onto your computer at no extra charge without asking you and not really caring what you think or want. If OneDrive gets installed on your computer, it's going to nag you until you log in. When you log into OneDrive, it moves all your files under a OneDrive folder by default. They call it backup. Instead of your stuff being under C, users, owner, or whatever the username is, and then desktop documents, pictures, they shove it under C, users, owner, OneDrive desktop documents, pictures, whatever. And then OneDrive takes all your files, siphons them up off your computer, sends them up to Microsoft servers, you know, some other guy's computer, AKA the cloud, and then deletes them from your computer to save space. And what happens when you open one of these files? It doesn't open the file. It downloads your data on demand. So rather than having a copy of your data on the computer and then synchronizing it with a server like Dropbox or Box or SugarSync or any of the other billion storage synchronization things out there, OneDrive siphons up all your data from your computer, deletes it from your computer, holds it behind Microsoft's lock and key, and then downloads it on demand, which means when you open that document, you're not opening the document. You're telling OneDrive, download this document once you've re-downloaded my data that you took away from me in the first place. Then you can do what I originally wanted. But what if the internet goes out? What if you're not online? Your data's gone. 
If you're not online and you attempt to access a OneDrive file that isn't locally cached because you tried to use it after Microsoft siphoned it up and deleted it, it's just gone. You got nothing. You got no access to nothing. You're screwed. Data's gone. Until you can get back on the internet and hope, hope that you never have a problem with accessing your Microsoft account, that you never have an issue where you have to log into your Microsoft account to get that OneDrive stuff hooked back up. And remember the two-factor authentication is bullshit video I made earlier? If you have a problem with your two-factor authentication, you may not be able to get back into your Microsoft account. You may not be able to get back the data that Microsoft siphoned up and effectively stole from you. So there's several scenarios here where Microsoft has caused data loss or at least apparent data loss, or if nothing else, money loss to get the data back. But it gets even worse, and this one has nothing to do with Microsoft. I consider this to basically be the ultimate example of automatic updates. Beyond that, even unattended automatic updates that are part of a workflow. But automatic updates destroying data. There is a package manager called NPM. I won't go into the detail of what it is. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't need to. But the bottom line is NPM is used by millions of people who make software every single day to pull in automatic dependencies. All those big frameworks that make everything slow and bloated and crappy now, they automatically pull in the latest version of everything to pair with their software. Every library auto-updates so that they don't have to, rather than you getting their software with the library that they've been testing against for months or years and know is stable and good, you get whatever's the latest thing. There's been more than one instance where an NPM package has been sabotaged by the developer. Um, but this usually is something like rendering it useless, ineffective. But one package decided to protest the whole Ukraine, Russia, blah, blah, blah thing and delete all of the data in your system's home folder if your system indicated that it was geolocated in Russia or Belarus. An automatic update that programmers use destroyed all their data. If this one library was in use by their software and they auto-pulled it in, it destroyed everything they had. You can't get much more sinister than that. Even CryptoLocker ransomware is kinder than this automatically updated protest package that destroys all the data that it can access in your home folder. Because at least you can get your data back if you give some scumbag some cryptocurrency, if you get a CryptoLocker ransomware. But you can't do that if it just trashes everything in your home folder as a form of protest of some war that you probably have nothing to do with. Yeah, software is a dangerous thing, man. And automatic updates are absolute cancer. But the biggest problem I see with automatic updates is not, ironically, is not Microsoft's Windows update or Office update. It's the updates you don't think about. Because this guy with this NPM package update, NPM pulls this new package and the package runs as part of his framework. It may not be the developer who ultimately got screwed. It may be the user in Russia or Belarus that then ended up with the final product that got screwed. You don't usually get to choose where you live. It's pretty hard to just get up and leave everyone and everything behind, leave your entire culture, your family, all of that. So it's pretty rough when you have to live not in a certain area of the world to not have an automatic update destroy everything, and you didn't have anything to do with the choices that led to you getting that update. Pretty scary, right? Anyway, the next time we'll probably have something to say about drivers. Boy, oh boy, do I have some interesting stuff about drivers that basically leave your system them wide open for destruction. Jody Bruchon signing off. Send me money. Love you. Bye. <laughs>